another episode of the After Hours podcast. Uh, today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, usually, we interview traders and we kind of ask them about their story and their emotional journey, but we wanted to switch it up and change it a little bit. We want to start doing more of mentoring sessions, um, at least sprinkle those in there and change things up. Yeah. Uh, so today, we have uh, Jackpot Jones. Is his name Jackpot in chat? Bones. Jackpot Bones. Jackpot Bones. Oh, Jack by Bones. Jeez. That's what I'm saying. This is what I, when I was thinking about you. I was thinking something way different. But uh, he's been with us for a while at MIC. Uh, he's been a member for, you said, almost a year, right? Yeah. Cool. So if you want to introduce yourself, give a little backstory yeah. and talk a little bit about your trading. Sure. So I'm Mitch. Uh, I'm from Montreal, uh, not far from Harry, uh, 45. Um, my story basically is I've been a serial entrepreneur my whole life. Uh, before COVID, I was in the uh, online gaming business, sports related, and when sports got shut down, it just clobbered us, right? So uh, at that point, I was looking at doing something. I've always had knowledge of the market as a long-term investor, and I've done well, um, had interest in day trading. Yeah. So at that point, the first person I stumble upon is one of those chat rooms, and uh, I buy the course. It's like, you know, four grand or something like that. Uh I study, I go through all the videos, I start paper trading, and I got my ass handed to me. Within <laughs> three months, I was down 20 to 30K, and it wasn't just one big blow up. It was just constantly losing. There was no process, there was no risk management. And uh, I said, I remember sitting at home once and just saying to myself, like, this can't be it. Like, it can't be who's faster on the buttons, you know? It, yeah. it yeah. didn't make sense. So I stumbled upon Alex's uh, interview at SMB. It's one of my um, favorite videos, man. Yeah, great video. So yep. I, I was checking that out. And then I got into you guys and I, I saw Bao. And uh, at that point, it was Nico. He was just leaving, I believe. Oh, man. Um, so it got me interested. And I've always been more of a, a short bias guy because even in my real life, like if I go to the casino, if I play craps, I'm going to fade the table. I'm going to play the don't pass line. So yep. It worked perfectly for me. So I joined in November 2020. And the rest is history. I mean, I can run through everything or you can ask me questions, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that you're when you joined, at that point, were you at like the lowest part of your trading career? Like, were you just really confused and like, really had no idea about any process or like setups? Or at that point, had you started to at least gain an understanding? Yeah. No. So when I joined, it was it was all brand new to me. It was a different world, man. Like I didn't even know about having a locate to short. And at one point, I remember going back and forth between: Do I want a long? Do I want a short? Yeah. And I was I was questioning, like, man, should I be go spending money on locates before I even make a trade? Like that's yeah. insane. And then I realized that's the cost of doing business, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But the biggest problem for me was from like November 2020 to about, I would say, March 2021, I had to unlearn all the shit I learned yep. in the chat room. Yep. Um, and that was with Farmer, right? That was Farmer? Uh, yeah, that was, was Farmer. Yeah, that was with Farmer. <laughs> uh, it was a complete disaster. I remember at one point in his videos, he's like, I used to sit around just training my finger to click my, my hotkeys as fast as I can. To, to, I, 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 it's like muscle memory says, you gotta get that muscle memory. I'm like, this can't be it then. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna <laughs> trade like that. So I knew it was wrong and I, I just, I was out. And then, you know, I met you guys and just seeing all the mods and, and, and starting to learn the process, it really started coming together. But I, you know, listen, uh, I'm, I'm a profitable trader now. I'm consistently profitable since June. It's amazing. I've had maybe nice. seven red days in the last two and a half to three months. Yeah. I love that. The problem that I was running into though, is I had a few. And I still to this day have my biggest issues right now is letting my winners run. Yep. Um, always. I'm, I still trade my P and L, which is something that I just have to, it's a, it's a mental block. I have to stop doing it. And before that, it was risk management. And I would have those weeks where, you know, I'd make, you know, four or 500 a day. No problem. It was great. I go into the market. I could pull money out of the market. And then I had that one day. I'm down 1,000, 1,500. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just sets me back. So it's like two steps forward, three steps back. And, and it took me a long time to figure that stuff out. Yeah. So, I mean, you're saying, you're, you know, now that you're consistently profitable, like, 
and I will say it's impressive because that takes, that wasn't that long. You know what I no. mean? Like that, that is pretty quick and that's amazing. I love to hear that. And I think that goes to show like the process works and, you know, but for you, was there one piece that like kind of triggered it that to like go from like kind of being like a gambler to being consistently profitable? Was it one thing or was it like a couple different things that, that kind of domino that? I think it was a couple different things. Like one, one of the times was when one of my, you know, I think second to last blow ups, blow ups that I lost, let's say a thousand dollars. What I was doing was because I'm on trade zero, they're allowing you to move your max daily loss. So I'd always set my max daily loss at one day's profit, you know, and I'd get into a trade and I'd be like, oh, I can buy my my way out of this. And then it would balloon and I'd lose my shit. So I I actually texted Bao and we had been talking a little bit here and there. He'd just been helping me for a few things. And he just, he ripped my ass. He just gave me shit. He's like, (laughs) you're you're not going to make this happen if you keep doing stupid shit like that. Like it's on you. And I, and I knew it. Yep. So by him ripping me, kind of set me straight a little bit with that. Um, so my risk management is much better. It's still a work in progress. Everything is Always. a work in progress. Yep. But I'll tell you, man, I, I wake up at 7.30. And I know you, everyone's heard this before. I wake up at 7.30. I get my kids out the door to school. I'm watching the markets. I'm watching the main chat. I'm looking at what plays are available. I'm locating what I have to locate. I'm in front of my computer all day, even during zombie times. If a trade sets up for me, perfect. I'm not going to chase anything. Good for you. That's awesome. I'm here from 8 a.m. till f- I usually stop at 3 p.m. I get yeah. the kids, yep. come home, yeah. make dinner, and then I'll watch the TV with my wife or whatever. And then I'm ripping through charts all night long, watching videos all night long. And I'm a yeah, night owl. That. So I get to sleep at 1, 2 in the morning. So I put the work in, man. I watch yeah. every video multiple times. I'll reach out to the mods. I watch the webinars. If I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm watching on replay. I'm doing what I have to do to be successful. And that's what just has to be done, man. It's oh, all absolutely. screen time. It's all screen time. Like if you don't have screen time, you, you, there's no chance you can make it. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, go ahead, Eric. I just wanted to just say one thing is that I noticed that in the, in the chat, like I see you talk a lot about like death line, like 588 death line or 642 death line. Um, Cause I think like for people who have like been here for a while, like, I mean, I've been in MIC for a while. I know James has too. Like you kind of recognize the same type of people and kind of how they trade. And like, you've been kind of more of like a death line type of guy, I believe, or like what type of setups, you know, have you been kind of like being able to kind of make money on in this type of market? Because I mean, for longing and shorting, it has not really been the easiest type of right like i mean we're seeing bbig like have a massive tank candle and then rip from 6 to 11 we're seeing you know pstv today just chopping around that can't mm-hmm. pick a direction so um what type of stuff have you been kind of you know you know using to to kind of keep you consistent in your type of toolbox so i'll give you in my opinion the one setup that i think is not good for new traders i think is first resistance because you're, you're going, if you're a short, you're going into it where that stock's running against you. And yep. at that point, I think what a lot of people get into the trouble with, and I did as well, is that I was adding to a loser. So I try to avoid shorting the first resistance. I'll do it with very small size at the top of the range because yep. you can't really blow up at that point if you have your risk in place. Yep. So for me, like everyone sees me in chat, death lines are my favorite A plus setups. I size into those. Um, it's, you know, the risk is super tight. If it's over by 10 cents, you know, it's reclaiming and you're out. Um, yep. Death candles have been amazing in the past. I find in the last month to two months that they've been reclaiming. They're, they're killer. They're yeah. killer right now. So it's like, that's a nail and bail for me. Um, yep. Whereas a death line, if I, if I had better patience and that's what I'm working on, you know, you can, if there's meat on the bone, man, you can get a buck, yep. a buck and a half on a death line. And it's like zero yeah. stress. Yeah. Um, and my other two setups that I really like to trade are if it cracks major support, wherever that may be, I'll short that bounce. If it's under VWAP, I'll short it with size. If it's over VWAP, which I tend to not trade over VWAP anymore, but if it's over VWAP, I'll I'll put some small size on and wait for it to confirm. Um, and trend breaks, actually, I really like drawing my trend trend line. And when I see that trend break, it's not a break. It can't just be a little dip and up, but if it breaks that trend line with authority, then I'll short that bounce. And if it reclaims again, my risk is super tight. So I don't have to really stress about it, you know? 
Um, I like that, man. You know what's funny yeah. talking to you is uh, is I can just tell that you actually do watch the videos because I like, we get hundreds of DMs a day. I'm sure Harry can attest to this as well. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, like you, some person will say, like, "Oh yeah, I've watched the video," but but when you talk to them about it, you can almost tell that they're almost lying or that they just didn't really focus on it. So it's it's actually refreshing to hear you even talk about like the setups and and it's just yeah. it's um, very kudos to you man being a father and Thank doing you. this can't be fucking easy either so that's you definitely put in the fucking work it's awesome yeah for thank sure. you brother listen and it, really the fact that i can reach out to any of you guys um at any time of the day and i know within a few hours i'm getting a response back it's just amazing and um you know i tried the tab group at the beginning but what was happening was uh, I was with guys that were a lot younger than me that had no responsibility and it just wasn't, yep. you know, they trade the open. So it wasn't the same mindset. And uh, so I went through a few, um, I went through a few tabs and then I actually found a group right now that I'm with and they're just amazing. So That's most awesome. of them trade the open and, but they know I'm in front of the screens all day and they're checking in with me wherever they are. If they're at work, they're like, are you okay? Are you safe? Where are you at? What's your risk? I love that. dude. And oh, that yeah. keeps me in yeah. check. And, and I never believed the man. I was like, okay, tabs, blah, 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 blah. It's all bullshit. But in the end, these guys are, are, are just keeping me, you know, just level. And it's, and, yeah. and it's a big thing for me. But again, man, I'm listen, like I said, I'm consistently profitable. I'm not where I want to be. I think I'll get where I want to be. Um, I've been trading pretty small size. I'm slowly sizing up now because I know my risk is in place. Yeah. Um, and I have to trust my lines more than I do. Yep. And, and I have to avoid FOMO. So, I mean, these are all the things that we hear all, all the time and you just yep. have to do it. Um, yep. So I guess what are the things right now that are like, like, what are something that we could help you with? Like, do you have something direct that you really struggle with and that just hearing some advice kind of person to person would help on or? Um, so like I said, my biggest problem, and I, I don't know where you guys stand with this is, 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 is trading line to line. So my entries are actually pretty good these days. My exits can use a lot of work, right? So if I have size on and I see that now I'm looking at my P and L and I'm up, I'm going to take half off and I shouldn't take half off because every time I do it, it hits my other line. It hits my exit. So, I mean, these are things that I don't know if you can help me, you know, if you've dealt with these things, um, the sure. trading the p and I'm trying to get it off my screen with Trade Zero. It's such a fucked up platform that yeah. I, I don't know how to cover it up. And not having that would be a huge help to me. But, you know, I think what I want from you guys is to, if you have any suggestions on how to, to level up. I mean, yep. I, I trade a small account and I'm growing that account, but I need to level up. I need to get that confidence because I know I can do it. When I look at my charts at the end of the night, I know it's in hindsight, but... I was yeah. like, man, I, I was in that trade. Why didn't I just not hold on to it, right? Absolutely. Harry, you want to hit those points? Because Harry's one of the best line-to-line traders I've ever seen, to be honest. So I, I think, think you, you want to hit those points, then I'll jump in and do it. Yeah, too. like one thing that I've really kind of stressed is that, um, you know, let's say there's a really good support line at five bucks, or maybe I'm shorting and there's a good resistance line at, at $6. For me, if, if let's say I hit that and I'm in the money right away, that's something that I kind of say to myself, okay, I can hold this a bit longer because this is working right away. Like that's telling me that my idea is working right away. Like if I am kind of like long, maybe let's say the high a day is six bucks. Okay. And I'm long at five eighty, and we pop, we get to $6, but, and, and $6 is a significant level. Like that high a day level is very significant. If it goes over that, technically a bunch of shorts should be stopping out. That should be going crazy. We should be moving higher. But if we're starting to fight that level, if we're having a hard time getting past that, I'm saying to myself, no, I'm going to take this off because I I, I start fighting with myself. I start fighting with the stock. I start fighting with the ticker. And, you know, when you talk about like, oh, yeah, I'm short. Like there's been times where, you know, I've been short of stock or I've been long of stock and everything has just really worked so well that I was like, okay, what is the reason for me to take this trade off? You know, because I kind of say to myself, okay, what's the reason? My reason is maybe, okay, the breakout level, it didn't really do or act the way that I liked. You know, maybe maybe you're short into a pop and we just automatically crack and we're right through a major support and we've death lined. Like, why are you going to take that off? You know, right. right? You know that a ton of longs are bagged and you know that like with authority, like, you know that 100%, a ton of longs are bagged. So for me, I'm like, okay, 
well, I can wait 10 minutes and see where this kind of goes. And if the volume is fading and we're confirmed to go lower, you know, I can hang on to that for a little bit. And it's the same thing if I'm long, like, right? We break high a day. Immediately we go from six to seven. Everyone's talking about it. Boom, 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 hot check. Okay, I can hold on to this for a little bit, right? And so that's kind of will, what will you will you today. will you trail it? Uh well, it really depends. Like let's say I'm I'm always looking to kind of scale out when when like how overextended we get from VWAP. Like mm -hmm. as far as on the long side, like I'm I'm looking at the daily chart mostly for levels if we broke in high a day. And if we're kind of, you know, a lot of the things for longing is that you know, you're kind of like looking for that high day break and seeing kind of where it goes. Like, um, so, I mean, I'm just paying attention to every kind of key level on the chart. And, you know, if we're having, if we're stalling, if we can't get by that level, if it's really hard, you know, I'll, I'll always take some off into whole and half dollar, but you know, sometimes we just blow right through and it's like, we were at three fifty a minute ago. We're at $4 now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And those types of situations. But if I see it start to stall and we're like, we're printing like 350 and then 53 and 54 and back to 52. I'm going to look to take something like that off. Right, right. So, yeah. so I think for me on the short side, um, I had the same issue. Like I, my entries, like my whole career, like my whole trading career, my entries have honestly been pretty like good, but my problem was like I would short and then I'd cover so quick because I'd like, be like, I'm up money, I'm up money. And yep. I, I've done it all, man. I've hid my PL, I put tape on my PL. Uh, I'm good at math. So like obviously I just I know what I'm up when I'm when I'm mm -hmm. in the trade. Um so honestly my cure was I I put a FOMO cover button on my uh, montage and and I just even if you don't can't do a, a hot button or whatever, like I you can just do it manually. It's just you know if you're short like two thousand shares, right? And you know you have to look at it from like an like a a bird's eye view of like, all right, if I cover now, like Harry said, like, why would I cover now if I'm right? Right. If the trade's working for you immediately, you have to think the worst case scenario is you could just stop out for break even. Right. So that's like your first step is to remember if the trade works immediately, you're already in the money. Worst case scenario, you just stop out for break even or a tiny loss. Two is that if the trade's working, and you just understand you're risking, like for me, it took kind of recognizing like I'm risking money here to make more money. Why am I going to risk money, put in all this work just to pay myself half the job? That'd right. be like me, yeah. me doing a full haircut and only taking half the money. Right. right? right. So that was kind of step two. And then step three was kind of this formal cover where like, I know even today I feel the need to cover. So today on BBGI, uh, you know, I was short my full size, you know, and I had a, a sick average. And I knew the 485, I mean, the uh, 885 line or whatever it was, was coming, but I paid myself like 20% of my total, like short on the right. dip to the nineties, because that, that was enough for me to like, feel like, all right, I, it's, it, I think it's like an adrenaline thing in your brain. Sometimes we're like, yeah. you just need to take a little off. You right. take a small piece and then who the hell carries? You're already making money. Now that kind of like that itch is gone. Now you're like, all right, I'm, I'm up some money. Now I can wait for my next spot. And all I did was put my cover out there, man. I put my cover out there and I let it happen. And that's something too that, and it fucking tanked you because sadly the lines, they work so well. They're like magnets. It's and crazy. It's, fuck, it's fucked up, dude. It's crazy. And like, that's the reality is once you gain that confidence, I mean, some people struggle and I just tell them, dude, set the fantasy order, set your fantasy order for the cover you want, cover a piece and set the rest. And then you know what? Again, set a break even stop or even a stop at a little bit a little bit less profit or a little bit of profit if it yeah. you know goes back to near your average. And that's really it, man. Like that for me, like that cured it. And just seeing like a trader like Alex hold like 10, 20, 30,000 shares. Like we used to trade on the phone together sometimes. And he'd be short, like massive size. And I'll be like, dude, you like you must look at your PL and be like, oh my God, I'm up a Honda Civic. I should cover right. it. Like, but but no, he's just like, nope. He's like, this line's coming. And it's just so methodical and it's so robotic yeah. and like, that's it. And that's what Harry does too, man. I see it. He's like, I'm waiting for this line. It hits that line. He's like, it, it confirms he's in and he sells at the same. I can tell you Harry's charts just because I know where the line going to fucking get out at. It's just, yeah. it's, and once you start recognizing that the best traders out there just wait for their spots, you kind of start to, it's like working out, man. You get that, those exercises in and eventually it's, it'll become second nature yeah. for you. And I think that's what, you know, I'm struggling with the most. So now what I'm trying to do is, if I get in a trade and it starts working in my favor, let's say I have a trade, I'm, 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 I'm shorting it at the 10 line and I'm scaling from 
10 to 10, 20. Um, but it hits 10. What I'll do, if I, it starts working in my favor, I'll just put a stop loss for break even. And then yeah. I'll just keep my other, yeah. my other orders out there. Right. So I can't really lose, but maybe it'll hit my other orders yeah. and I'll have, I'll have a better shot there. So that's, that's kind of what I've been, ex- I've been experimenting with that. I'm just, for me, like I said, my biggest issue right now is letting my winners go to the next line and, yeah. And, uh, and trading my p l right? So that's, those yep. are the things that I'm working on. Um, and what I've also noticed that that was hurting me a little bit, and actually I got caught with TCAT the other day uh, when it just ripped out of the open, came down and then ripped out of the open. I and got it, it, was, it, it got everybody, right? So yeah. I think that ha- it happened in like five minutes or 10 minutes out of the open. So now I'm actually kind of not trading the open anymore unless it's a low yeah. hanging fruit. I just want to stay away from it because I need those more methodical yep. times and, 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 and bounces and everything like that. And one of the mods now who I really love his charts and I'll tell you it's Steven. I love, love what Steven. he does. I love that what he does. Sense. He it cracks support. Yep. He'll, sh- he'll take a little piece, try to break the next support level. He'll hit it on the bounce and then he'll start covering, hit it. And then he'll short it again on the next major support level. And that's how he, he makes those all day faders. Yep. It, it's amazing what he's doing. Yeah. And Steven kicks ass, bro. And and honestly, dude, the market sentiment has changed. Like trading the open used to be uh, as a short, it was like almost so easy. And like looking back on it now, I can't even believe how easy it was. It'd be like you'd get that pop kind of through the resistance, it would stall, yeah. you'd short, that was it. And and now it's like trading the open is fucking hard. And hard. you know, with stocks like TCAT, like you know, you gotta remember it when you see guys like Alex crush it, and I always try to remind members this too that like you're talking about a fucking, the guy's a monster, right? And what makes Alex so good at what he does is that he can scale such a wide range, but when it's fucking right and it's time, he'll load the boat in. Right. So like for him, like like me, I scaled like $2 and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, looks yeah, like, you yeah. know, I was like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> but, but like for him, it's like, and that's the thing, like it's okay to, to not be that guy because like the MIC process works throughout all times of day really. And However, whichever way the stock's trading, you want to trade the open, trade the open, you stick to the same kind of guidelines. But if what makes you feel comfortable is letting the morning play out and then trading the chart as it's there, like, dude, hell yeah, like stick with that and go for it. And yep. there's nothing wrong with that. And I, th- I think that was a big thing. And it's actually a question that I have for you guys is, is really, is that you guys, should I take care of that? Hold on. Okay. Um, yeah, you're good. <laughs> it's like figuring out your trading style, right? So when you come yep. into MIC for all the members out there, it's like, okay, now you're looking at Bao, who's just, it's, it's an algo. He's an algo, yeah. a human algo. Yeah. A robot, you're very yeah. similar with your trading and at, with Alex. Uh, you know, Harry's got a totally, he's a long, it's a totally different world for me. Austin, who's just a genius, he can trade every which way. Um, and then you have Steven, who's yeah. the guy that I like to base my trades around after seeing all his charts. And Steph also, but Steph trades a lot over VWAP and that gets me yep. nervous because yep. there you can get blown up. And that's where he did mention that he got blown up. Yep. Um, so I think for my, my, for me, it's trying to find my trading style because you can't be any of you and whether you're good or bad, you have to be who you are and what makes you feel more comfortable. So my question for both you and Harry is how long did it take you to figure out your trading style? You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you, know, you knew you were short bias and Harry knows he's long bias, but how did you figure out how you're going to look and trade those charts? Yeah. Harry, you want to take it? Um, yeah, I think that one's a more complicated question because that one has to deal with, um, you know, day-to-day setups, right? Um, and how I kind of found myself was that, you know, after you've been trading for a while, you kind of start to understand that the same things keep happening over and over and over again, right? Like, I understand that if something has gotten, you know, an insane amount of volume pre-market and everyone is just hot and horny to go long the stock, that I might have to wait till zombie time. You know, my whole type of, you know, trading and my whole journey and my whole evolution has really been about waiting for the right kind of moment and saying to myself, okay, what's my thesis, right? If you're a short trader... You, you want to be sh- shorting against trap longs. You want to be shorting against, you know, to, to, to kind of get that supply. 
And if you're a long trader, you want to be getting that kind of demand and kind of like picking those spots for those kind of areas. And for me, it was just saying, okay, like, um, let's say, you know, we have a, a broken chart, right? Do I want to go long the first kind of pop on a broken chart? Like, no, there's no way, right? But do I want to wait maybe, you know, 25, 30 minutes until we start grinding, grinding, grinding higher? And now we're time to start, you know, parabolicking, you know, up and blowing everyone out. Those are the type of spots that I want to wait for. So my right. whole kind of trading mentality has been about, you know, and like, I mean, I don't mean to like swear or anything, but like I've been fucked so many times that like you can't really fuck me anymore. Right. And that's the whole kind of, you know, thing in the whole kind of process is that I just don't want to be FOMOing in. And, you know, if I have a lot of executions on, on the day, I know that it was a FOMO day. I know that if I'm, you know, running around and I'm just looking for a trade here, or there, you know, it's probably time to step away. I think how I've found my style is just, I, I'll look at a chart and just say to myself, okay, you know, how did this kind of type of play play out the last time I traded it, right? And we all know, right? You see a stock halt up a couple of times. You know how you traded that the last time. You see a broken ticker, a non-hot chick stock. How'd you trade that the last time? How'd that kind of come into play? You know, and so I kind of learned where it's like through my stock selection and through kind of seeing things, that's where I really kind of started to understand like, okay, why are, why are my day two trades profitable? Well, usually because it's a stronger daily chart. How come my day three tra trades are profitable? Well, usually it's an even stronger daily chart, right? How come my day one trades are profitable? Well, I'm trying to get trap shorts in the pre-market. So there's all these different things that have kind of helped me find my identity. The number one thing is just, let everyone get fucked before you. And right. then when you have that little rat trade that you can take, where it's like, I've waited so long for this that I can take it and it's a go now. That's what I kind of look for. Like those sneaky trades that like, you know, I, I'm not emotional. So like, because like a big thing to me is that like, if I place a trade on, on the ticker, I'm immediately devoting myself, my money and my emotions to that fucking ticker right there. The minute I press buy button, right? So now I just say to myself, okay, I don't want to really be emotionally involved with this ticker. I don't even want to buy a hundred shares because I don't want any skin in the game. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to see how things go. Is this ticker kind of starting to grind up? Is it starting to kind of grind higher and, and, you know, have shorts kind of on guard a little bit. That's what I'm kind of looking for. Whereas if I was shorting, I just, if I was shorting, I think like, I'd just say, and I mean, I could go short these tickers now and just, place random fucking orders out and uh, just short into the broken stocks because it's like, how many people are paying attention to this stock too, right? Is it up 10% and no one gives a shit and everyone wants to trade a different stock? So I think the stock selection for me has been very key as well. You know, mm -hmm. I, the big part of your, a big, big, big part of your, uh, you know, your trading process and your trading journey is just finding the right stocks to trade, you know? I agree, yeah. Right? Like, does this chart have a beaten down daily chart? Is it a dilution piece of shit pig? You know, that's perfect for a short, but has this ticker gotten like some type of like FDA approval news and we're running front side pre-market? You know, that's something that I'll kind of look for. So it's really just the stock selection, you know, understanding the game and just taking your time. And that is what has led me to success. Whereas I find if I'm rushing, I'm taking a bunch of trades, I wanna make money, I'm not paying attention to the chart, I'm all over, I stock pumps and I'm fucking long, like that's not gonna make me any money. And so it's really just been the slow methodical process that's helped me. Yeah, makes so, sense. so I think for me, and we are coming up on the, the 30 minute mark too, so I'll, I'll get this answer out and then we can kind of start to wrap it up. But, um, I think for me, like I joined MIC, like, because I, I didn't really know much about Bao yet. I knew about Alex, but I, you know, I knew he taught um, Alex a lot, uh, Bao taught Alex a lot, but I tried every style and like, you know, I tried trading like Bao basically like going line to line, like his version of line to line, like how robotic it is, like just setting orders no matter what. And, and I just found myself like sweating, like actually sweating. I'm sitting mm -hmm. in my chair. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't have time to do this. I don't know how he's doing that. I don't know how to scale. I'd, I'd message him. I'd be like, how many scales do you do? Like, how many bullets is this? How many bullets do I get out? Like, and, it, and no matter how he explained it to me, like, I almost just couldn't get it. Like, I just, I felt nauseous in the trade. Like, I mm -hmm. always feel like I'm about to get my back blown out. And I was like fucking scared. Whereas like when I would trade like more similar to the style of Alex, which is like, I call it like 
emotional technical analysis. Like he's just trading off of like boom, 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 like where the charts breaking, where like longs are fucked, getting out, like just no emotions, getting in, getting out, and that's it. Like quick and trying to do it with size. I felt like totally in control. Like I felt like at that moment I could turn around, like I could be full size in a trade. I could turn around, talk to my girlfriend or whatever, look back and be a hundred percent comfortable. Right. Whereas like when you have that feeling of like, I can't take my fucking eyes away from the screen. Like, I feel like that means you're either a, you're oversized or B you're trading something you shouldn't be. And I think that for me was like the turning point where I was like, dude, stop trying to be a trader that you're not like, there's a million ways to make money in the market. Harry's sick at longs, Bow's sick at like technical analysis, like line to line robotic ass trading. You know, everyone has their specialty. But when you're in a trade, if you can't fucking go to the bathroom and you can't like take a sip of water, relax, like just like take a minute, then you're trading probably either too big or you're trading something you shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. And that was my big thing was just my I'm very good at listening to my gut. And I've I've been lucky. I've met with a few like trading coaches and like the all of them have said very similar things that it's just it's this feeling in your gut. Like if you're doing something you shouldn't be and it's against your body and like you, it, it's all, it's in our, it's like a wired in our brains. We can't fucking make this. Like We're not in control of that. It's just, if you're doing something that you're not meant to do, you know it. And that's yeah. how I ex- explain it to everybody is like, I literally get nauseous, like a feeling in like the pit of my stomach. And I think for me, once I got rid of that was when I started trading the style that just, I got it right. Like you were talking about like how trading over VWAP makes you anxious. Fuck that shit. Don't right. do it because if it's not for you, then it's not for you. And again, look at uh, Steven. I don't see Steven trade over VWAP much, but he nails, he makes his bread, his bread and butter is the under VWAP line to line, like just hitting the bounce to support getting out. And you know what? I can't do what he does. I love it. I'm like, dude, that'd be sick. I wish I could sit here all day and just do that. Yep. But you know what? When I sit here all day, I'm like, I'm fucking bored. I'm going to go trade Tesla. Like I'm going to, like, I just can't right. do it. Right. So that's what it was for me. It was just finding that comfort and that like, as stupid as on that inner like zen i'm just like i'm in the fucking driver's seat and i'm doing what i'm meant to be like that's how i feel when i'm cutting hair man like i i know what i'm doing like i'm in the zone like i'm i i just get it but if you have me go fucking install like an ac unit or something i'll be like Dude, what the fuck am i doing like i'll be lost right <laughs> so it's like the same concept man it's just it's just find what works for you and stick to it and don't let anyone tell you it doesn't it can't fucking work but it's 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 interesting that you say that because it is a feeling in your body because like yep. you said, if I'm trading over VWAP, I'm stressed, man. I'm sweating yeah. every tick. Your palms are sweaty. Like, yeah, and I, yeah. I don't want that. So I know that if, I, if I'm if i under VWAP and I know that there's a level where there's all bag holders, yeah. I'm just going to short the shit out of that level. Yeah. See, um, look how you're talking about it. You're like, I'm going to short the shit out of it. Right, exactly. First resistance, you're like, eh. like it's like right. a scared feeling. No, I'm, I'm, when, yep. when I when I trade the first resistance, I'm literally shitting in my pants the whole time, and, <laughs> I, and that's like when I was with Farmer. It's like this can't be what I want to do. I don't want to be a speed <laughs> demon on the hotkeys. So you know what? I don't want to trade the first resistance. I don't want to trade over VWAP. And but what you said is really true. You feel it in your body. You know if you're comfortable with it or not. And I wanted to when when guys get into trades and they'll say in main main chat like that's a stress free trade. That's yeah. what I want. I don't yeah. want to sit here shitting, man. And yeah. <laughs> at least I can use VWAP or a line above as, as, as my, my ultimate yep. stop out. And, and that's it. So it's really important what you, what you both said. It makes a huge difference, man. Oh, that's- yeah, man. I, I really hope this, this kind of like get together helped. And, and I, I, Harry, I liked it. I really do. I think this is pretty Amazing. fun. Yeah, for sure. I really, I, sure. I can go for another hour, but I know uh, we have a time limit. And I really appreciate it, guys. And I hope that. The other members see what's going on here. Again, it's coming from a guy that's not an overly successful trader right now. And, you know, I see those big P&Ls, man, and I want it to be me, but I know my time will come. You got to put in the work. You got to come up with your process. You got to trade the right stocks. If you're going to trade a, you know, if you're a short, you're trading a 1 million float on SSR, then, you know, you're asking to get blown out. So that's just what it is. Well, man, again, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, Harry, thank you, man. That was was fucking awesome.